I'm gonna show you how to make inexpensive wall hung cabinets out of 100% solid pine and none of that expensive plywood. I made mine to go over my sliding sliding miter saw station, but you can make these for anywhere in your house because they look so good. Let me show you how I made them. I splurged for some pre-milled S4S pine. It was actually not that much more expensive, but it saves me about 100 board feet of planing and jointing. Is it perfect? Definitely not, but it will do. The good thing about a softwood like pine is that if it's close enough, usually you can force it into submission. Now this is not really fine woodworking per se, but for a shop project, we can get by. After I rough cut them to length, I did want to edge joint them. Edge jointing is far less labor intensive than face jointing and planing. And to do that, I'm using the in-out method. Now, it's a very common method. If you haven't heard of it, real quick, you just stick an I and an O on each side of an edge joint, and then you put that I in towards the fence, and you put that O out towards the other side when you're using the jointer. This takes out any air in your fence, and it makes your joint come out as close to perfect as possible. When I'm clamping two boards together, I'm usually not too worried, but when I'm adding more boards, like in this case, I'm doing three at a time, then I want some alignment aid so that the joints aren't offset and that would cause a lot of effort down the line. So I want this as smooth as possible, but I also want it flat as possible, which is uh, slightly different too. Some people will grab their biscuit joiner or they'll use dowels or their expensive domino machine and litter the edges of the board so that they'll come into alignment and not be cockeyed. But that doesn't prevent you from clamping a cup into the board when gluing it up. The only surefire way that I've found to do that is to use clamping calls, which go straight across the board and cinch everything flat and in alignment at the same time. They're a bit more effort to use, but I totally think it's worth it every single time. I suppose if you're using your biscuits or dowels for alignment and you're super careful not to clamp a cup into the panel, then that'll probably be a more efficient use of clamps. Once all your panels are glued up, the instinct, and I get it, is to grab your sander with 80 or 60 grit and just give her across the whole board, trying to get any little deviations of those little seams to be nice and flat. There's an easier way. First, if you do have any glue drips that you didn't clean off before, like me, take a cheap paint scraper and just knock them off. Boom, done. Next, grab a hand plane and don't run away. It's really not that big a deal. This one isn't even all that sharp because it's pine. You can get away with not having a super, super sharp hand plane. All I'm gonna do is crudely knock down these little tiny ridges that are left after the glue up. The calls are great, but they're not perfect. So I have a little ridge here and there. All it takes is a couple swipes across those ridges. All right, I mean, it doesn't look amazing, but those seams are a lot more flush and I saved a bunch of time sanding. So now I can just quickly go over it with some 80 grit. I made about 10 to 12 panels. Admittedly, some of the panels didn't come out perfectly flat because I didn't face joint them or plane them. Surprise. Anyway, to deal with the ones that are more cupped, I had a strange idea. I just threw them on the ground like that. But I did it so the cup side was facing down. The moisture from the concrete kind of wicked into the panel and now they're flat. How am I going to join the sides to the bottom and top to make a case? Whoop. I could use a domino, but that's not really my shtick here on YouTube. I could simply glue and screw it. That would be good. It would be strong enough. I could do rabbits. They're pretty strong, pretty easy, but because my panels aren't super flat, you might not get an even depth across it and then you gotta finesse it with hand tools. And for the same reason, I won't be doing miters either because it'll be very difficult to get a clean joint without a super flat board. So I think I could dowel this together. I've never done a case like this with dowels. 
There's no reason why it shouldn't work. It's going to be super strong. Dowels. Now this is super easy. Y'all know that I love my Dowelmax doweling jig. I have marked the front edge of my bottom here. Actually, this is my top. I should probably write that down on it so I don't forget. Now I'm gonna put my first dowel in from the front edge a little bit. I'm gonna offset it with the combo square, hold it, and tighten it. Now I can drill my first hole. And I'm gonna use the built-in spacing of the dowel jig to space five dowels along my panel. So I'm gonna use the first one and I'm gonna use the last one. And when I loosen up the jig, I'm gonna slide it over and use this reference pin to stick the first hole of the jig in the last hole that I just drilled. And now I can drill the last hole in the jig again. And now it's spaced perfectly again. Slide it down and put the pin in the last hole I just drilled and repeat. See, looking good. Now that's the top and I already did the bottom. Let's do the sides. Now, since the bottom and top are drilled in through the edge, I need to drill the mating dowel holes into the bottom inside face along the edge. So the dowel max, as fun as it is, can convert. So I just need to unscrew these little doodads here and flip the clamp around like that. And now I can clamp it in the same manner like I did before, spacing it from the front edge and do the exact same thing. gonna put two in for now because I'll never get it apart if I put any more dowels in. Oh yeah. Oh it lines up so well. My panels aren't even that flat and it's good. Maybe this is an unpopular opinion but I don't think you need to have a back to an upper cabinet. It's strong enough as is and once it's screwed to the wall it's not going to rack. It's not going to go anywhere. You just need to get it up on the wall nice and square. That being said, I am going to put backs on these cabinets, but structurally they are not really needed. I thought it would be a cool idea to continue the beadboard panels that I used on the lowers and the sides and put them for the back of the cabinet. So when you open the doors, you get like, ooh, country vibes. It will be really like nice and quaint and idyllic inside my cab cabinets. I got started with my beadboard shiplap router bit. This is a bit different than a typical beading bit because it gives you this little ledge here for a rabbit that'll go on the opposite side to overlap right here. Now I'm gonna put a round over over here so that it matches the radius of the bead. The last step is to add a rabbit under this round over so it overlaps onto the bead. In the future, when I want to put the back slats on the back of the case, I don't want to just butt it up against the back and call it good because it's just going to look weird from the side. Not that you're going to really see it anyway, but it's not good practice. So what I'm going to do is do a rabbit so this has somewhere to nestle nice and snugly. So I semi lied to you guys. I didn't put a rabbit around the entire perimeter of the case. I didn't do it on the top edge because it's not really necessary because next I'm going to put this little brace piece across the top back edge. The primary purpose of this brace piece is somewhere to securely screw the cabinet to the wall, but also it's going to be a naturally good place to nail the slats to the back. Yeah. Since the entire cabinet is going to be hanging off of this piece, I definitely want to make sure there's a solid connection between this and the sides. So I'm going to be using more dowels because they're pretty strong. I'm going to start by drilling holes for the dowels in the end of our brace piece. And 
And that is how a cabinet is doweled together. Now, I'm not gonna glue it up yet because there's a couple of things I wanna do first to make my life easier. I'm going to put finish on the inside of my cabinets to make it all look nice when I open up the doors. Now, I know it's not necessary, it's just a workshop, but like, I can't apologize for being me, it's just what I wanna do. So, it's easier to do this now before everything's all glued together than it will be after I glue it all together. The only other thing I'm gonna do before I glue this together is to drill shelf pin holes for adjustable shelves on the inside. Now the problem is, is that I don't own a shelf pin jig and I wasn't thinking ahead and I need one now and I don't have time to get one. So let's make a jig. Never made a jig before either, but I'm just gonna make one up on the top of my head right now. Is this? The strongest piece in the world? Probably not, but I'm not planning on fighting any sick ninjas with it, so. I didn't look up what other people do to make a shelf pin jig, but in my mind, sometimes you can get more creative and come up with new cool ideas if you don't look at what people are doing. So the idea with a homemade jig like this is that I can't guarantee the accuracy and the spacing of these holes to be super precise. So what that means is that I can't just willy-nilly throw this anywhere and expect things to line up really well. But if I keep track and I always keep this bottom edge on the bottom of the cabinet, I should be okay in terms of having the right hole spacing. This little fun piece with these funny little holes slides onto these pocket screws and I can tighten these up so I can use this as a fence against the front edge. And because these screws are in slots, I can just slide the fence over to the other side to drill the holes in the other side. I use a 3 8 inch Forstner bit to make these holes, which is gonna allow me to use this 3 8 inch collar on my router with a quarter inch bit installed so I can go down my merry way plunging shelf pin holes. It is time to glue up the cases. Now I have just filled up my glue bottle. I have all my dowels I need. I have my clamps. I have my cup, which I'll tell you about in a second. And I have AG1, which is the sponsor of today's video. Now I've been drinking AG1 for some time now, and it's a part of a, a bigger effort on my part to stop eating so much crap and just just do better as a human being because in essence, it's a foundational nutritional supplement and that just adds to my daily wellness routine. Now, I used to take a multivitamin for years and I don't really know if that actually did anything for me because if you looked at the toilet after, well, you know. Oh wait, I almost forgot because I usually do a couple drops of the AG Vitamin D3 and K2 supplement. One, two, excellent. But AG1 prioritizes finding the best ingredients with the most absorption and potency so that you can make sure that it's actually getting in your body and not just going down into the municipal sewer system. Now time to make the patented Scott Walsh glue dowel salad. First ingredients, dowels. Second ingredient, glue. A little stir. Something that crosses my mind when I'm trying something for the first time is what am I putting in my body? Well, AG1 tests their products for 950 different contaminants and impurities. Whoa, did you see that? That was crazy. 950 different contaminants and impurities so that you're getting exactly what's on the label and nothing more. So head to the link below in the description to get a free one year supply of the AG Vitamin D3 and K2 supplement, plus five AG1 travel packs with your first purchase of AG1. Now, I better boogie or this is not gonna go well. Which do you go? Top, that's top, this goes like that. No, this goes like that. Yes.
It's time to install the back slats in the back of the cabinet. And I already put some finish on, and I know I should put finish on both sides, but uh, I'm not. After I cut them down, I scraped a bit of finish off the top and bottom so the glue has something to bond to. And I'm just gonna brad nail them in place for the glue to dry. I use this 16th inch drill bit to make sure that the panels are spaced evenly and there's a little bit of room for expansion and contraction. Let's see how this looks. Huh. It's so quaint in there. City boy but country boy at heart. All right, let's do the other two. Well, I wouldn't be a good YouTuber if I wasn't putting LEDs and everything. So now I'm routing a small channel in the bottom of all the cases to house this little piece of aluminum, which will house an LED strip. Now I did one pass with a router, but this strip is a weird size. It's not standard in metric or in inches. So I'm gonna adjust my router fence to make up the difference. It's time to hock the cabinets up on the wall. And to do that, I made myself a little helper. And you can tell that because it is a H for helper. Anyway, once it's on that, I can use playing cards to shim it up to my laser level. And then I can send a few screws into the studs, except for this wall is actually strapping on cinder block. So I'm temporarily screwing it to the strapping. And then afterwards, I'm gonna go and send in a few tap cons to make it super rock solid. I am gonna put a screw through the bottom in the back here where it's not super strong, but this is just gonna hold the box tight to the wall. It's not gonna carry much load. It's time to start making the doors for the upper cabinets, and I'm gonna design them much like the drawer fronts on my lower cabinets. I wanted the frames to turn out as flat as possible, so instead of using pre-milled stuff, I did have some leftover rough cut stuff that I milled up on my jointer and planer, and this is gonna allow me to get the flattest frame possible. Using the same bead bit that I used on the backs of the upper cabinets, I just lowered it down a little bit so I didn't get the extra rabbit and I was able to get that nice bead feature and that's gonna be on the inside perimeter around all the frames. Now I need to make a groove that goes along the middle that's gonna eventually hold a panel. Next up, I gotta join these together and make a frame out of it. But with this profile, as you can see, it's gonna look a little weird if I just try and join these together. Now you saw me combat this before on the lowers when I made these drawer fronts right here. And I'm gonna basically do the same thing. And if you haven't seen the video on the lowers, A, you should go watch it after this video, but B, let me refresh you on what I did to do this. You need to do something called a jack miter. And you can see here, it kind of just removes the whole profile from where it's gonna to join together. And then the profile itself has this miter on it so that the bead is gonna look like it wraps around. Now on the joining piece, I also will need to miter. But first, let me show you how I did the jack miter. First off, I tilted the blade to 45 degrees and that's what's gonna give us that miter on the bead. Second, I set the fence so that once the board is butted up against the fence, the distance between the end and the beginning of that miter is the same as the width of the mating piece. And finally, set the blade height so that you're removing the entire bead with the depth of cut, but nothing more. My styles are ready to join with the rails, but my rails are not ready to join with the styles. I still need to cut them to length, but the length of this is gonna be determined by what type of joinery method I'm gonna to use to attach them together. So 
Typically what's done with most frame and panels is using a stub tenon. And that's really easy to do because typically you're going to have little grooves on the styles where you can make little tenons on the rails and then they'll fit together nicely. I did that on this, but I find those little stub tenons, especially with a softer wood like pine, aren't the sturdiest. Honestly, I'm sure it'll be fine, but because these are doors and all of the weight is hung by hinges on one side, while the other side wants to be pulled down with gravity, I want to use something a little bit stronger. Now, if you wanted to do a full blown mortise and tenon, you could, and that's why you would leave your rail longer. So you would leave room to make a tenon on each side. I was originally going to do this, but I don't know. I'm kind of lazy right now. <laughs> I just want to kind of get this done. And something that's going to be nearly as strong as the mortise and tenon is going to be dowels. Just like I joined the case pieces together, you can join these together with dowels too. Now, because of my jackrabbit that I made, it makes it a little bit trickier, but I think it'll work out just fine. Time to make some panels for the doors. Otherwise those frames I made aren't gonna be doors. As an aside, I will have a complete set of step-by-step -step plans for these upper cabinets, just like I had a set of plans for the miter saw station below on my website. And you can make it 100% out of pine or solid wood, or you can make it out of plywood too, if that's more of your bag. Now I really take my time with these plans. I don't want you to get into a situation where you've glued up things out of order and cause everything to go haywire. I want to take all of that guesswork out and make sure that you're having as fun as possible in your shop, just like I do. Actually, you'll probably have more fun because I'm the one who has to figure all this out and make all the mistakes, but you won't have to make all the mistakes because the plans are very thorough and detailed. Anyway, time to mill up this pine. Even though I milled up all the individual pieces of the panels before gluing them up into panels, it's developed a bit of a cup. Not really surprising because it's kind of cheap wood and I still had it drying for months, but uh, you know, whatever. And admittedly, I am rushing through this process. I should mill it down, let it sit for a bit in stickers and then do it again. But anyway, I have a cupped panel. What do I do? Here's an easy way. Instead of using a whole planer sled and doing that whole thing, I just have a cup here. I'm not dealing with any twist or roughness or warp or anything like that. I ripped off a thin strip from one of the offcuts of the panel, and I'm just gonna glue it in the middle of the panel on the concave side. Something like that. And what this is gonna do is that when I run it through the planer with the cup side down, it'll prevent the planer rollers from squeezing that cup out of it. And then once it exits the planer, that cup would spring back and still be there. So this is kind of like a quick, easy, lazy version of a planer sled. After planing it cup side down, I flipped it over so it was cup side up. And then I was able to plane off that little strip that I glued on. And you know what? This came out pretty good. It's really nice and flat now. And I've got it down to a half inch, which is the thickness I need to have it inset from the rails and styles. Before I cut these down in individual panels, I'm gonna put some finish on because it's easier like this than it will be in smaller pieces. I got my dowels, I got my dowel max, link in the description, and I got my drill set up, so now I'm ready to drill the dowel joints for my frames. I'm almost ready to glue them up, but I have to cut my panels down to size and cut rabbits around them to fit in those grooves. I cut the rabbits all around the perimeter of each panel. I did that at the router table because I really didn't want to set up the dado stack. I think setting up a router bit is a lot faster than the dado stack. I never try and nail the fit right off the machine 
because there's little variations and you always end up doing something too much and then you get a loose fit. So I always finesse the fit down with hand tools to make a nice snug fit. I always put a little chamfer on both sides of each rabbit and that just makes things going together a lot easier when it comes time to gluing it up. Now I'll take my first side, see how it fits. It's a little too tight predictably. So you can use a bit of sandpaper glued to a stick or something. I like using a shoulder plane. Um, it's a bit expensive, but if you can swing one, I use it all the time to do things like this for drawer boxes and things like that. All it takes is a little swipe. Beautiful. And then move on to the next edge. Ah, see? This is why I don't try and nail the fit. If I had raised the router bit to get this one fitting great right off the machine, then I would have been too deep on this one and this would have been way too loose of a fit. And with that, all of the doors are glued up. Now I just gotta clean them up. I just had to do a little bit of trimming at the table saw to get the gaps around each door to be pretty good. About a 16th to an eighth. Now I can round over all the edges. And I know this might be a little bit bougie, I guess, but if you can swing it, having a dedicated cordless router to a dedicated round over bit for these applications is really nice to have because you can just whip it out and give her around there and you're already done. You don't have to mess with changing bits. My favorite round over bit for this application is this 3 32nd inch Amana round over bit. Uh, I find a 16th is a little too small and the round over can disappear after you sand it and an eighth inch I think is just a little too chonky for this application. So I'll leave a link below to this round over bit. It's my favorite. I put a couple of coats of finish on the frames to match the panel and now it's time to drill out the holes for the cup hinges. They are done and they are lit. I made some adjustable shelves out of more pine panels. I got everything up off the floor and I filled it up with stuff and that makes me happy because now I'm no longer tripping over as much stuff. Installing the LED lights was fun and not frustrating at all. And they look good, finally. And as a reminder, I have plans for my new upper cabinets. I have plans for our miter saw station and a whole bunch more on my website, www.scottwalsh.co. I thought I had a funny idea for the outro, but I can't remember.